Let me show you how aldol condensations work. Here we have an aldehyde, that's a CHO group at the end of the molecule, and we have a hydrogen on the carbon next to the carbon that has the double bonded oxygen on it. That hydrogen is called an alpha proton, and it's easily removed even by weak bases like NaOH. And when I say a weak base, I mean comparatively to other organic bases like LDA, stuff like that. In any case, when you mix the two, that H readily comes right off and it makes the conjugate base of the aldehyde, which still has the intact double bonded O, but this carbon atom has a lone pair of electrons on it. Now you may notice that there is a resonance structure here where you've reformed the double bond, where you've formed a double bond and you've moved that negative charge center up to the oxygen. This is actually the more stable of the two because it has the negative charge on the electronegative atom, but nonetheless, the resonance structures. Now, what I've done is I've taken this same aldehyde and put it here. So let's assume we only have this in solution and we add weak base. Some of these molecules get deprotonated and then this negative charge center will be attracted to the carbon atom that's attached to the oxygen. After all, he's delta plus, he's attached to oxygen. What we end up with is displacement of electrons to that oxygen and we've now created a bond between this carbon and this carbon. So, here I've got this oxygen, which has a newly formed negative charge on it because he took the lone pair that was in the pi bond there. And we've created a bond to this carbon here. He had another carbon with double bonded O attached to him. If you want to start with this resonance structure, we can show the lone pair moving in here. This lone pair gets displaced to here and we end up with the exact same product. Which mechanism you show, I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter. They're both valid. Now, this is actually uh, very hungry to have the, uh, the proton replaced on him. Enough, it, I mean, just having water around is enough to protonate that. So I'm gonna convert him to an OH. Now I'm assuming there's water around because I have dilute NaOH here. We're in aqueous solution. Now, the other cool bit is that this product, if you heat it, will do an elimination reaction to form another double bond. Here's what I mean. We have alpha protons here as well. And so in the same NaOH solution that we had from before, we could rip a proton off of that. Still have a lone pair, so he gets a negative charge. And what's, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to move that lone pair into the double bond and make give that a pair of electrons to the OH. And I've done an elimination reaction to form a double bond between these two carbons. What I really did over the course of two steps was lose an H, lose an OH, and so really I've just eliminated water, but it happened in two steps because the NaOH deprotonated this first. And then I still have my double bonded oxygen there, and I end up with this product, the alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. I'm even gonna write that out because uh, I remember hearing it a lot when I was in the organ uh, organic chemistry back in the day. Alpha, beta, and saturated aldehyde. How can you figure out if you stop here or go here? Well, in the lab, we actually control that with the conditions that we do the reaction under. And sometimes it's just inevitable that this will form. If this elimination is easy enough, it'll just happen spontaneously. In any case, all I'm trying to say is, if you mix an aldehyde that has an alpha proton with dilute NaOH or any stronger base, you will remove the alpha proton and that new negative charge center will attack the same molecule, like another copy of that molecule, to create a carbon-carbon bond that can later be protonated with the water that's around. 
And if you're feeling frisky, you can always eliminate H2O to form the alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. Pretty sweet. I'm gonna do another video about the crossed aldol condensation, which is what happens when you mix two aldehydes and they're not exactly the same. Here they were, you can only get one product and that's how life goes. Best of luck to you.